Uh, but I should tell you, Sonny, that I enjoyed the sample you sent me. I thought it really did taste like lamb patties. Um, and we enjoyed several meals out of it because, as you know, there were several different um, combinations you sent us. So that was great. Thank you. No problem, Howard. And we've gotten it even better just because we've been doing always tinkering and we're at like the start of the S-curve. So uh, we could uh, get you some more samples of the latest and greatest. I think you'll be even more blown away. So uh, let us know if that, that interests you. Cool. Thank you. You don't have to get it out to Bonnie Doon, though, do you? No, no, no. We just, um, we're going to, well, we'll cook it anywhere you send it to us. <laughs> so, uh, so, okay, well, why don't we get started? Uh, so as I as I forewarned everybody at the beginning of the of the morning, uh, this is the year of alt protein and uh, alternative meat and plant based protein companies and cellular production and fermentation. So lots of different sort of alternative protein uh, stories. Uh, and this one, um, Black Sheep, is one such startup. But I'm going to let um, uh, Rob. Uh, Rob, you're the introducer, right? I am. Um, Rob Kirk of AgFunder. Um, introduce um, Sonny. Great. Uh, so I'm Rob Leclerc. Uh, just wait. Uh, you guys can hear audio, right? right. Yeah, you can hear you. Uh, I'm Rob Leclerc, one of the founding partners um, at AgFunder, an investor in Black Sheep. Now, we met Sonny in the fall of 2019 when they were just two guys in a lab. Before uh, Black Sheep, Sonny was a PM at both The Economist and Amazon, and then became one of the very first employees at Finless Food, a cell ag company focused on cultivated tuna. And it was there that Sonny discovered that lab-grown tuna is mostly flavorless. And it was this mystery that eventually led him to found Black Sheep, where him and his co-founder discovered that a class of natural compounds called branched-chain fatty acids were driving the flavor of lamb, but are also actually important components in the flavor of meat and dairy more generally. Impossible as heme, Black Sheep has BCFAs. When we first tried their plant-based lamb over a year ago, we were definitely blown away. And then after an additional year, of stealth R&D, I can categorically say that if we were all here meeting in the real world, and there was a table of impossible beyond and black sheep at the back, that black sheep would be the most popular selection, even if you don't like lamb. It's that special. It's much more meat forward and unlike animal-based lamb, they can modulate and exclude undesirable flavors like fortain to give you perfect lamb. And what they really did was open my eyes to the possibility that Maybe we could create plant-based meats that actually taste better than any animal-based meat out there. And with their BCFA platform, I think they have an opportunity to become one of the most iconic and important companies in food tech. And with that, I'm very excited to hand this over to Sunny to talk more about Black Sheep. Thank you for that intro, Rob. And thank you so much, Howard, for having us. Uh, I'm just trying to share my screen and it seems like it's disabled. Um, so give me one second. James, if you hear me. You got it. Perfect. Thank you so much, James. <clears throat> so we're Black Sheep Foods and we're raising the bomb plant-based. Now we eat the meats that we do, not because they taste the best, because they're the cheapest to produce. Consider the chicken. Since the 50s, the chicken has grown 5X. And the reason why it looks like it skipped a few leg days at the gym is because producers want to maximize the amount of meat that they get per square foot. They've stuffed these chickens into their little coops they make sure that they can't even stand up. Actually, some chickens that try to stand up break their legs. Is that cruel? Yes. Is it efficient? Absolutely. Yet efficiency is not what people look for in food in general. And this is, this is data for plant-based, but in food in general, you're not looking for efficiency. You're looking for two most important things, taste and health, right? This is why you eat chips sometimes and a lot of times, but not all the times because it's not that healthy. So all these plant-based alternatives, they're currently benchmarking to domesticated animals, which aren't the tastiest. So you're making a copy of a bad copy. And this is why we're super excited, as Rob mentioned, to introduce branched-chain fatty acids. Branched-chain fatty acids give gamier meats, well, they're gamier flavor. Now, what is game? Now, let's consider when you all eat something that you don't know what it is, right? You say one of two things. Either it tastes like chicken, which is actually code for saying, it's bland as hell, throw some spices on it, and I'll eat it. Or you say number two, it tastes gamey. And gamey is a mosaic of amazing, amazing tastes. Consider the Ballard duck. If you ever had Ballard duck, you, you will touch chicken again. Consider the venison, consider goat, consider lamb. These are awesome flavors. And to sort of have a mental model, and I think Rob went into this a little bit, Impossible Foods has heme, right? Heme 
they create the Impossible Burger, with, which is beef. That bloody metallic taste also translates into the Impossible Pork. And when Impossible says what fish they want to do, they choose tuna because tuna has a high concentration of hemoglobin inside of it, which the heme platform helps to unlock. Similarly with BCFAs, we can do any gamey mate meat under the sun. Goat, lamb, duck, you name it, we can do it. But what are we, what are we gonna start off with? We're gonna start off with something that's both alien and familiar at the same time. And it's the world's first plant-based lamb. And as Rob said, it is delicious. Not only is it delicious, it's nutritionally comparable to lamb. It has no gluten, no soy, no cholesterol, no really, this stuff is fantastic. And we did a lot of work in the last two years to get it to market. So we're the only company in the U.S. with regulatory approval for the BCFAs in land. Second, we're the only ones who have a natural supply chain of this stuff. There's synthetic BCFAs that are used in pharma, and most of the stuff that you'll try to find will be synthetic. We had to build a supply chain from the ground up. Not only that, we're patent pending for the exclusive use of BCFAs in all plant-based products and cell-based products, but we'll park that for the, a future date. I want to go through a little thought experiment. So let's say you eat two servings of animal beef in the current state. Do you think in 2025, 2030, you'll be eating two servings of plant-based beef? Do you think you'll be that maniacal? We don't think so. You're gonna eat the best food and best tasting foods possible. And that's why we think our market is a general alternative protein market. And we're super excited to have people try our product. And to that end, we'll be launching in SF with a Michelin star restaurant, with a fast fine restaurant and with trendy restaurants. And we'll be expanding to LA and New York City in Q4. After that, we'll be going direct to customer so that anyone in America can enjoy our plant-based land. With, the, with regards to marketing, we'll be doing digital advertising, influencer marketing. There's a high degree of trust between people who follow influencers and the influencers themselves. And so when influencers try something, their followers get to experience it with them. And of course, we'll be doing traditional PR through all the, all the channels that we're all familiar with. Now, our BCFA is a platform to unlock amazing flavors and tastes. Here's what we, here's how we like to do things. Form factors that you know and love. So think about the chicken nugget. We're gonna keep that form factor of the nugget, but we're gonna replace bland chicken with amazing duck. So you'll have a duck nugget or duck it as we like to call it, that's gonna blow your mind. Similarly, you understand the burger, you love the burger, lamb burger gonna amaze you. So form factors you know and love with flavors you're not going to even be able to comprehend. And that's what gets us excited in the morning. And to that end, do we have the team to do it? Of course we do. We have an amazing team. So myself, you know, former MBA, so I understand the operations business side of things with Ismail really owning the tech. He focused on lipids at Berkeley. And so he really understands what BCFAs are, how to cultivate them, how to ferment them, how do you grow up that supply chain. Um, with regards to uh, 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 getting our product out to market. We just hired an uh, ex-senior director of operations from beyond, Vishwas Gorpade. So we're super excited to have him come on board and help us scale up. And in terms of making a great texture and sensory, we have Dr. Jen, Dr. Miriam. And with regards to marketing, we have one of the best teams out there. They make the greatest puns and you can go on our website and experience all of them with Lauren and Alice and our chef who constantly pushes us to be better and make sure we could use our lamb and all these versatile meals is Chef Jason. We're also supported by amazing investors, Rob being one of them, alongside Bessemer, New Crop, Big Idea Ventures, City Shot, and Seesaw. And our advisors are absolutely fantastic. So Jessica Carr, who was employee 12 at uh, Impossible and has co-authored 10 of their patents, really understood the power of our flavor platform and joined extremely early. I think actually she was the one who brought us into the midst of space and um, she's been amazing to work with. Second, we want to really focus on the texture because flavor and texture together make magic. And to that end, we got Dr. Chris Gregson, whose team literally built the texture analyzer that beyond impossible, literally anyone in the plant-based industry uses to benchmark how their meats texture is doing against their animal counterparts. So super awesome advisory board, super awesome investor board. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to try the product and be part of our taste testers, please reach out to me and we'll get you in to Black Sheep Foods. Thank you so much and really appreciate the time here. Stop sharing, stop sharing. Okay, there That's we go. a great presentation. Um, any questions out there? And by the way, you're welcome to turn on your screens and ask the questions live if you like. You don't have to put it into the chat.
So uh, okay. pending question, um, Ted, did you have a question? You're on, uh, you're on mute, Ted. No, I just felt like I was being impersonal. <laughs> Good. Well, I, Rob, um, since we have you and you were an early investor, maybe you could just tell us about your thought process when you made the investment and where you stand or, and many, any further thoughts you might have. Yeah, I mean, in some ways it was pretty simple. Um, you know, I got a call from uh, my associate, one of our associates, and he said, you got to come down and taste this. I was just blown away. And he's Israeli and obviously they have a lot of lamb there. And, and he's also a vegetarian and hadn't had lamb in like a decade. Um, and so I thought, lamb, that sounds kind of weird, right? And so you go down there, but you, you taste something again that um, really has the potential and already is there in many ways um, to be better than another meat. And the, you know, the meat forwardness of it, the product quality was great. Um, you know, when we made the investment, we did a whole bunch of reference calls, you know, on Sunny and the team and um, everything came up great, right? So like, you know, we've got a great team, product, great product market fit or team market fit, um, a fantastic product um, and coming at it with an entirely new angle, right? With very you know, comparable IP to what Impossible would have um, with their heme um, and a great platform story. So for us, it was, it was kind of an obvious and easy investment to make just because the product was already so good so early. Um, and then, you know, just even over the last year um, has gotten, gotten better, uh, which, was, which kind of surprised us. Um, we were able to go in for a taste, and I think it was January, February, and they kept a sample from um, their original formulation, uh, just to show us actually how much and how clear it was the product did improve both on, on taste and texture. Um, so we think there's a, an enormous market of here and we think they're gonna open a new category. Great. Well, I certainly can vouch for the taste. I, I love the taste, I, but let me just ask because we're seeing so many alternative meat uh, companies out there, right? So what does it take, Sunny, in your view, to be successful when you're competing with so many people trying to get the attention of both the investors and the public uh, in this sector? I think there's a, a short-term answer to that and a long-term answer. So you're right, the signal to noise right now is uh, really hard to find. Um, and so our, our strategy is sort of uh, impossible to go to market on steroids. So what are we doing? We're launching with Michelin star restaurants, which give us a brand association, but concurrently, unlike impossible, which they did in series where they launched with Michelin star and they went a little bit more mass market, we're doing it kind of both in parallel. So we're launching with Michelin star restaurants and fast find. So we get the brand association. People can um, feel comfortable knowing that it's a good product because Michelin star chefs are putting their name on it, but then they could also go try it. You could literally open up Postmates and order it that day, which gives us like this, um, I think opportunity to really delight people. And so that, that's what gets us excited in the short term. I think in the long term, the plant-based space, you're absolutely right, Howard. It's very easy to make a plant-based product right now. You could go on YouTube and find out how to make plant-based burgers, bacon, you have it, right? Like it's super easy. So I think the people that are investing in R&D now, they have a lead, right? Like we have a lead. I think if you tried our product, there's no other lamb out there that's comparable. The people that are investing in that R&D of like, we use two branch chain fatty acids currently for that lamb flavor. There's 50 that are found in lamb. So in the five years, we're gonna only extend this lead. And I think the short term is associate yourself with tastemakers, make sure that you have a good product. I think in the long term, it's focus on R&D, make sure the texture is perfect, make sure the cook is perfect, make sure the smell is perfect, the way the package opens. There's so much little things that you could focus on to get it close to mother nature that that's, that's what gets us excited in the morning, right? Perfect. Well, great, exciting. Um, I can I can vouch for it. I'm already a customer. Thank you for the presentation, Sonny, and thanks for the remarks, uh, Rob. Good to see you, Rob. Good to see you. Uh, Thank you so much, Howard. This was awesome.